in the vest. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. All right. Keep it all of this. <laughs> Go ahead. In the vast corners of the internet, three pair of fucking. Hey, what up? <laughs> I can't do it, man. Um, what up? What up? No, what Mark, up? you can't do it. You <laughs> can't do it. You <laughs> can't. We believe in you. We believe in you. We believe We're not rushing you. You, you can do it. Do it for Peter. Oh my God. Do it for Peter, <laughs> Mark. All right. I'm not going to look at y'all. <laughs> in the vast distance of the internet, three parents came together to discuss a block of cartoon shows like never seen before. Tonight, Pop Cult Parent is proud to present. The discussion of Toonami, bigger than the best, stronger than the rest, only on the internet. No, 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 no. <laughs> what up, internet? Yo, if you haven't guessed, we are talking about Toonami, this pop cult parent. We're going to get right into it. It's one of your hosts, MF Jones. And as always, I'm joined by... This is Niels R.Y., a.k.a. Call Big O. And this is Shannon, a.k.a. Dragon Ball Z, only on Tsunami. Nice, nice. <laughs> I'm so jealous of y'all's AKAs today. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, um, if, if y'all haven't heard or haven't seen, Tsunami is about to celebrate its, I think, 25th anniversary which is yeah, amazing years. and scary because time is a son of a gun good god tsunami's 25 years old but it was a big part of our lives if you listen to our past episode the dbz episode the episode was like a third of the episode was just about tsunami and tsunami history and we always said we would come back and revisit tsunami and here we are and you know we're going to get right into it we've missed y'all i know you missed us it's time to talk about one of the greatest cartoon blocks of all time nails got the history let's do it yeah mark it only took us what like two years and some change to actually get back to a promise <laughs> of saying we'll do a tsunami show <laughs> which funny enough if you've been a member of the pop cult for some time you do know that the three of us always mention how we're gonna do a new episode on something that we discussed during the show and almost never do well you know what if you stick with us long enough, it actually happens, and we're proving it today. So we're going to uh, talk about Tsunami, and I'm excited to give a brief history on Tsunami. So I'm sure most of you all know this, but as a reminder, uh, the original run of Tsunami uh, was an after-school program that started in March 1997 and ended in September of 2008. Like Mark said, this is the 25th. Uh, year anniversary. It was created by Sean Akins and Jason DeMarco. And Toonami was originally aimed at teenagers during the after school time. Now, some of you all may remember this, but before Toonami, there was a action block called Super Adventures. And then right after that is this is like the after block or uh, the block of TV that I personally remember and like watched all the time, which is Power Zone. Power Zone, I don't know if y'all remember Power Zone, but shout out to the Centurions because Power Zone was how I got to watch the Centurions and Power Extreme. But you know, if y'all don't know that, it, it is what it is. Y'all remember Power Zone at all? Nah, I think I, I didn't get Cartoon Network. So I, I would have those weird, you know, when we have the preview, like yes. for one week, you get, I just want to talk like Peter Cole in this whole episode, for one <laughs> week you get, <laughs> but you get like Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon or Disney Channel for like a week or so. And they're like, tell your parents you want this. So when I was going through that, like kind of in and out phase with that, I did, I don't think Toonami or Power Zone was even a thing yet. Oh, yes, yes. I hear you. How about you, Shannon? Yeah. Does Power Zone ring a bell? Nah, I was I was about to say the same. I had not heard of Power Zone and and I was in a similar thing. Like I did not I sort of had satellite like on and off, you know, throughout the time. So that's why even even I think when Toonami had started, like there were it was like a while before I had had got it. But uh but yeah, I definitely hadn't heard of Power Zone. Well, let me just say this, fellas. Y'all didn't miss out. I literally just mentioned 
<laughs> one of the only shows that were on Power Zone, <laughs> Centurions. Anyways, back to Tsunami. So yeah, real, real quick, cool, real cool. it was yes. like, welcome back to Power Zone, our only fan, Nels. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. No one remembers Nels. Power Zone. That's how crazy Toonami was. No one remembers Power Zone. So Toonami is the combination of the word cartoon and Tsunami. Uh, the original host of Toonami is Motar. If you ever watched Space Ghost Coast to Coast, you probably remember Motar. Motar was one of the characters on Space Ghost. Um, later on, the host uh, for Toonami became Tom, or Toonami Operations Module. Um, and there was like at least three versions of Tom. But the voice that I always remember for Tom is Steve Bloom, the legend Steve Bloom. Mark, I don't know if you want to give him any cream or oh, shine man. right now. Like, who, who, come on. Like, if you, the name doesn't sound familiar, you've heard this guy's voice before. Um, I mean, off the bat, he's famously, he was Spice, Spike Spiegel in the dub of Cowboy Bebop. Where is it in? Um, Black War, Greymon, um, and Digimon. He played a bunch of characters in Star Wars Rebels. I mean, the guy is a legend in, in voiceover work. Um, I know there's one that's like, I, I, off the top of my tongue, I can't remember. But um, yeah, he, you've heard this guy's voice before. He's been everywhere. He was Tom, and he's still doing Tom um, to this day. Yeah, to me, he's always going to be Tom, and he's going to be Spike. So, tis what it is. All right. The original lineup. I'm curious. I, I just kind of want y'all and, of course, Pop Cult, if y'all can think. I'm going to tell you all what the original Toonami, Toonami lineup is, and I'm curious if you all are going to get it right. This is the original Toonami lineup. Thundercats. Voltron. The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest. And then they called it like roulette, cartoon roulette. But really what it was, was Birdman, Space Ghost, and the Herculoids. Do y'all remember the Herculoids? Yeah, that little, <laughs> was that little block? Blah, 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 blah. Yes, <laughs> that, little that block giant clay, out. space clay thing. And, and then they rode like the, they rode like that. Uh, the rhinoceros that, that, that had like a. <laughs> He shot like he a shot pea shooter out of energy <laughs> pinballs out of his horn. Yes, yes, Mark. Those are the Herculoids. Yes, <laughs> that yeah, and he had like a little baby one too, right? Yes, he had a little baby <laughs> jelly space <laughs> cosmic clay. Yes, it was a great, it was a great show. <laughs> All right. So in the original eleven-year run of Toonami, some of the shows include Beast Wars. Sailor Moon, Reboot, Ronin Warriors, all of the Gundams, including Gundam Wing, one of my favorites. Mark's going to hate that well, I said that. Well, well, well <laughs> let, me, let me push up my nerd glasses. Uh, technically, not all of the Gundams, maybe uh, uh, most of the Gundams at the time. <laughs> Damn it, Continue. Mark. Okay, yes, <laughs> some of the Gundams. There is literally like 50 different Gundam shows. So, yes, it wouldn't have all the Gundam, whatever. Batman, Superman, Tenchi Muyo, Outlaw Star, Big O, Yu Yu Hakushu, One Piece, Naruto. And those are the ones that are off the top of the dome. There is so much more. But, of course, when we talk about Toonami, there's really two things that we have to discuss when we talk about Toonami. The two most important pieces of Toonami is one, the greatest action anime of all time, Dragon Ball Z. And of course, number two, the legend that is Peter Cullen. Those two things equal Toonami. You cannot have Toonami without Dragon Ball Z and without Peter Cullen. And with that, fellas, I am so excited to start the conversation with y'all about Tsunami. And well, so one, any reactions to the history before we jump into any questions? So yeah, as you mentioned, Ronin Warriors, I think that was probably my first like maybe introduction to anime. So like just Ronin Warriors, that that takes it back for me because I, I just remember falling in love with that show 
and it might have it might have been before oh, it was even owned. To- Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love I, I loved it, <laughs> and I loved it. Uh, and I think that was that was probably even before they were like on Toonami because it yes. had been on. They like, used to be on yeah, UPN. Yeah. Yes. Yep. That's what, yeah. And so, so I, I love that. Love that, that you, you taking it back there. And then, uh, and then just, you know, other reaction, as you mentioned, Dragon Ball Z, that was my AKA for this one, all about Dragon Ball Z. There's so much to say about that. So can't wait to get into that later. But, uh, once again, uh, between Ronin Warriors and Dragon Ball Z, those were just, uh, some of the, the things where I just fell in love with anime, but Ryu the wildfire. All right, we, 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 this ain't a Ronan Warriors episode. I'm gonna stop, but yes, yeah, Here, Mark. I, um, I don't know. I never got into Ronan, man. I just, I just never. All my friend, my one of my best friends at the time had all the toys, and I just, I just couldn't get into it. But, um, it, you know, I was hearing you read that history. Like, I think the first anime, my first introduction to anime was, uh, y'all remember the show Gigantor? Oh, yeah, Gigantor. Yeah, it was, it was either Gigantor, that was sci fi. Yeah, it, was, it came channel, on Sci-Fi right? Channel. Yeah. Um, it was either Gigantor, Speed Racer, or Voltron. But I remember uh, Sailor Moon would come on. It, it wasn't on Cartoon Network, but it came on like some channel. And this was before I UPN. understood what anime. Was it UPN also? It was. Yeah, y'all remember there was like a block of kids shows that came on in the morning before school. UPN had a whole bunch of animes. <laughs> okay, okay, it's bad. And and I, I remember <laughs> I remember being like, there's something about this style that like, I, like man, like I don't know what it is. There's something like appealing about this style. And I was never really into Sailor Moon either. I tuned in for like the the theme song, like everybody, and then I check out. <laughs> it just wasn't my bag. But um, but hearing you talk about uh, Peter Cullen and DBZ now, it's like like man, I I used to tune in for Toonami just to hear. Peter Cullen talk like that man. And it's so funny because this man was a, a, a strong, uh, a, a center block, you know, stronghold for Toonami. And then after that Michael Bay movie came out, for some reason, Peter Cullen just never showed back up on Toonami ever again. I, I mean, like, obviously my price went up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Michael my Bay price movie, went up. <laughs> $700 million worldwide. Tsunami, see ya. You know, yo, but, yo, um, he was like seven hundred million. Don't lie. <laughs> like y'all can't afford me. <laughs> hey Peter, we sent over some pages for the new season of Tsunami. Oh, everyone who's going to be on Tsunami, hold on a second, because it's not me. <laughs> but um, there's a new Transformers movie coming out. <laughs> Sorry, to my I, I ain't got it. <laughs> But I saw I saw a stat uh, doing some research um, for this this podcast. Did y'all know that DBZ every time they aired a new episode on Tsunami, they they would they'd have like sixty one million people tune in. Like yes, there was legit crazy. a Peter Cullen promo that said sixty one million. The- don't lie. It was like it was about like 60, Dragon Ball Z. This like, is 60 no, million fans can't be wrong, you know. <laughs> th- like, yo, yeah. th- y'all need to understand if we I mean, shoot, let's just talk about Dragon Ball Z then. Cause y'all need to understand something. Dragon Ball Z was the number one program on TV for this demographic. For kids nine through like like nine through twenty-four. Nothing was beating Dragon Ball Z. It was ranked number one for like, I don't know how many years, but the the crazy thing was that it was number one, but it was dramatically growing year after year, all the way to like 2003. It just kept like, its growth percentage was like over 100% year after year. So imagine being the number one show on cable and dramatically increasing your audience by by two or three every single year for at least five years. It is like it is a astonish- Like the, I don't think there was anything like that at the time. Because like we're talk we're not talking prime time. We're talking five o'clock. Dragon Ball Z owned five o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time for 
close to like six, five, six years. Weekdays. Weekdays. Five o'clock. <laughs> Weekdays. So like, yeah, yeah like we, we just got a name. There was nothing like that at the time. And I don't know if there's ever been anything like that since, but like they dominated that block of time. It was like how the NFL runs Sundays. Dragon Ball Z owns five o'clock PM for years. So, yeah. It, yeah. And I just want to, for, to, as a frame of reference, 60 million, that is a, a ton of people. Just for reference, so I think like Rick and Morty at his height was pulling in a million an episode, and I think Game of Thrones at his height was pulling in eight to ten million. Walking Dead at its height was pulling twenty million, twenty two. I think twenty twenty two million people, million people, sixty million people. That that's you can start a country. That's that's small country. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z had more people than Game of Thrones at its height. <laughs> it's, it's, nuts. Ridiculous. it's nuts. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And I know this is a tsunami episode, but like let's 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 keep it a buck. Like that Dragon Ball Z introduced anime to a lot of people. And a lot of people sought out more anime because of DBZ. And you know Nels, we talked about this on the DB DBZ episode dbz was like that show that like oh it, it was okay that you liked it you know like like i i don't know growing up i felt like sometimes i had to hide my love of like anime and things of that nature but everyone was watching dbz everyone loved it everyone was talking about it. everyone had their theories everyone spent hours on the internet printing uh uh pictures of super saiyan 5 of what we thought of, you know, uh, yeah. I remember I remember going to like early AOL.com DBZ like forums, you know, it, it was it was it was a it was a national or worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, yeah I, I remember one of the one, I think one of the things that stood out to me was I, I think I was sort of similar to you, Mark, where it was like, yeah, like all about it. But it was like, I don't really know who can I talk to about it because <laughs> but then I feel like when things that happened uh, I played played basketball in high school and basically like the dude who's like basically about the coolest dude in the school coolest dude on the team this and that he made some reference about going super saiyan and and something like that and everybody was like okay we can do this then and then so we all you know we were all like okay <laughs> but yeah like for him to make the reference of going super saiyan and this and that and, I, and like that was like our basketball team's thing so it was yeah it was uh man just it just broke barriers <laughs> So I got to say, so it's similar to what you said, Mark. Toonami didn't introduce us to anime, but it did make anime front and center for our generation. So like the fact that the coolest person at school can talk about going Super Saiyan and it is accepted is because of Toonami. The fact that like everybody has seen Sailor Moon, like can you think 20 years before us, Nobody will talk about watching Sailor Moon. Everybody has watched Sailor Moon. That is because of Toonami. Like, the fact that we know Tenchi Muyo, the fact that, like, One Punch Man is where it is right now, Attack on Titan is where it is right now, My Hero Academia is where it is right now, is because we had Toonami. Like, Toonami has made it so that we are in a place where Japanese anime is just completely accepted in this country as like a premier uh medium that we digest so and and just its influence on our own country's media we started getting um teen titans the 2003 teen titans show that was highly influenced by anime avatar highly influenced by anime there's so many shows right now that are like anime-esque and you know who knows how many of those people grew up watching toonami that are like the producers or, or um heads of the showrunners of those shows real quick nails do you remember we would be at football practice mark this is how we became friends <laughs> this, <laughs> how we became, this, this is our origin story <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like dang man i hope we wrap this up so, so i can go watch tsunami if i no shared it we would be like all right special teams wraps up you get home get dressed we could at least get one episode of DVZ, like dog, it, and the whole team 
we're like we knew we couldn't like let the coaches hear us the whole team's like damn let's wrap this up man let's like tsunami new episode <laughs> when there was 43 new episodes of drag ball z my outlook on football completely changed <laughs> i was like i don't want to be here right now goku is finally fighting the uh captain ginyu i have been waiting half my life to finally see this fight go down, why are we talking about regional championships? I don't care about regional championships. I need to see this go down. Yeah, bro. Similar uh, similar for me. I'm thinking about pretty much, yeah, football practice ending and, and even like my sort of routine or, or getting, you know, getting there or whatever. I feel like there was a block where maybe Dragon Ball Z started about 530, you know, something like that. And so I, I just remember, it's like, okay, you know, football practice happens. And then as soon as as soon as it's over, you're like rushing because you're like, okay, I'll get home. Maybe I'll catch a little bit of Dragon Ball. That's cool. I saw that years ago anyway. But but actual Dragon Ball Z, I was like, I got to be home by this time. Give me a five minute buffer because I want to be sitting and ready. (laughs) And then, you know, watch it. Watch the episode of Dragon Ball Z. (laughs) But uh, similar extracurriculars were getting in the way of that. (laughs) I need sports for Six, 60, 60 million, don't lie. All right, y'all. Y'all want to jump in? So I'd love to hear what y'all afternoon routines were, like your after school routines were. And I can I can start. So, you know, obviously Toonami started in 97. I think I started high school in 2000. So for the first couple of years, there was no football. There was just like, you know, me coming home. So this is what I would do. I was a latchkey kid, by the way. So my job was to go home and to not leave the house up until my parents got there. So I go home, I make a fat boy snack. I'd sit down and I would proceed to watch at least three hours straight of cartoons until my parents got home and then I did work. What I would do was watch Power Zone until it became Toonami. I would be in the main living room, I have the food and nothing else. No one was allowed in the living room for those hours. No one could talk about touching the TV. Everybody knew what it was. I had control of the living room for those three hours. It was all me until my mom came home and then, you know, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. So yeah, that was that was my <laughs> that was oh, my afternoon routine. Was, my 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 like twelve year old heart just broke when you said Will of Fortune and Jeopardy. Like oh no, like that's that, when it was over. That's oh, when it was around. Goodness man, that was like the worst thing you could put on TV for me as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> Passe Jacket, Alice Trebek. Once they came on, I was like, all right, well, you know, this uh, homework got to get done. So you yep. know what? At least Will of Fortune is like they had a cool. Uh, it, it was decorated nicely. They had a big wheel. You know, the girl would turn the things around, and you know, sound effect Jeopardy. White. They were yep. they would literally just answer questions. <laughs> I, but what I will say is, you know what? It was great background music for homework because, like, you felt smart listening to Alice Trebek talk about what the answers were, and that just got it got me motivated yeah. to get. R.I.P. By the way, so, to Alex. Yeah, R.I.P. Alex mm-hmm. Trebek. We miss you, man. Um, but yeah, what about y'all? What's y'all? What was y'all the after school routine? Uh, so I just sort of had an epiphany right now, and 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 I just want to first, I just want to thank you, Niels and Mark, for really bringing this to my attention. But uh, it took some years, but now I finally realized why it took me forever to do my homework, uh, and it was because of tsunami. Now it seems like this would be something that makes sense, right? But I remember. Once again, I would get home after whatever practice, because uh, through high school, I played basketball, football, and track. And so it was always like, get get home at, uh, you know, practice is over. And so, and again, I would be home by myself because my mom and dad both work. So I would have at least about two-ish, two-ish hours or more, like home by myself. First thing I do, cool, get a snack, sandwich, something to drink. And I, I break out my homework. I'm going to have the TV on because I'm like, boom, you know, I'm going to just do some homework uh, while I'm watching the show. Or worst case scenario, I'm just going to do homework during the commercial breaks. And I'm like, cool. You know, I'm still still going to go through it. 
And I always wondered, like, no matter what I had, why did it always take me at least two hours to finish my homework? That is why, to Nami. Because for some reason in my head, I was always like, I can do this and watch TV at the same time. Granted, I knew Dragon Ball Z was an exception. I'm doing no work when Dragon Ball Z comes on. But the other ones, <laughs> nothing can... <laughs> gets done during Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> Got to be honest there. But uh, but no, that was that was pretty much my my routine. Like basically stretch home workout over the course of two hours, no matter what it was, because I was probably more so watching uh, Toonami and, and a number of the shows in that block instead. But yeah, that was there was pretty much my my routine. And then yeah, parents would get home. I'd maybe be able to squeeze in another episode or something once they were there, but uh, similar uh, to you, Mark, that uh, that that Pat Sajak, <laughs> Vanna White, uh, all, of oh. that, all of that would, would get me, and that, that'd be the end of that. As a kid, I was like, why is this even on TV? No one likes this. Like, <laughs> like It would make me like visceral and just like angry. Like, why is this even on? <laughs> So my routine, man, it, it, it's funny. Before, before I we got tsunami, my routine was like yours, and Nels. I'd run home, make me an ultimate fat boy snack, and then I would watch. I would flip back and forth between Kids WB and Fox Kids, because I don't know if you guys remember they had their afternoon block, and it wasn't until tsunami. Um, so I wasn't even introduced until tsunami. Um, until I went to go stay with my cousin for like a week. He lives in North Carolina. He had tsunami and dog. It it was like it was like seeing him for the first time. I was like, whoa, you get to watch Dragon Ball Z every 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 weekday at five. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and it was the summertime. So like we didn't have, you know, we were just chilling. And he was like, Oh, you haven't seen the best part yet, cuz midnight run. I was like, it's gonna come on again tonight at midnight. Dog, dog, like we, dog, we were in heaven, man. We would play video games, watch tsunami, go outside, play video games, watch midnight run, pass out. Like it was, and then on Sunday, the rising sun. Rising we saw the sun. rising sun. Yeah. You know, so when I went back home, I was just like, it was like giving me electricity, and then sending me back to the Stone Age when I got home. I was just like, what is this? What is life? What am I doing with my life? What are my parents doing with their life? How come we don't have too much? <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> what, why are we living like this? Why are we living like slobs? <laughs> You're like, what is qu- wrong with you? You're looking at your parents. Life. What is yeah. wrong with you? It's like cereal over all here. All of their life choices. <laughs> it's like, we're doing well here. It's like, no, I'm questioning I'm working the hard, provided, provided me and my brother. Look at this terrible life you've done. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and then when I get, when, when we finally got to NAMI, you know, it was like the end of my middle school up until, uh, not like middle school up into high school, but man, this might say a lot about me. I don't remember having homework in high school, fellas. Cause I remember when I lived in Arizona, when we when when I played football there, the rules were a little different because of the heat. You had to you had to practice at sundown. So I would actually go home and get a little bit of tsunami in, and then go go back to practice. Right. Um, but but when football season was over, I just remember coming home and watching tsunami. Like I don't remember doing homework. I really don't. I really don't remember having any homework. I remember having maybe some some papers or something, but I don't remember doing any homework in high school at all. Mark, I just don't. Mark, <laughs> Mark, let me just tell you what happened, just in case you were wondering. That's because you did it at school right before <laughs> class. <laughs> you were in, in case you remember what you were doing in the hallways and at lunch. You were working on the homework that was due that day. Yeah, you're probably you're right. welcome. That's what happened. <laughs> <You're probably right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> we talked about Dragon Ball Z, and you know, despite popular opinion, there were actually other shows on Tsunami besides Dragon Ball Z. So I yeah, love to Dragon hear. Ball. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was Dragon Ball. And GT. Yeah. And GT. <laughs> yes. There were other there were <laughs> there were other shows besides Dragon Ball Z on Toonami. So um like I listed a few, but I'd love to hear what shows you all watch. Like what were what were your like go-tos? What were some of your favorites? Um and I can I can jump in. Um, so I actually like I did some research and I like figured out what was my favorite lineup of all time for uh, for Toonami. So this was while it was still two hours. Four o'clock, it was Sailor Moon. Again, Sailor Moon, it is a recipe. I wasn't coming there for entertainment. I was coming there because it was routine. Finding Evil by moon, uh, Moonlight, Winning Love by Daylight, Never running from a real fight, even though she literally ran from every fight she has ever oh, been in her worst. entire life. <laughs> she was the worst, dog. Like <laughs> Sabrina, all the, would, other, all the other Sailor Scouts were like about that life, about that like, life. <laughs> <laughs> she she would just ah, and she was low key. Like to this day, I gotta tell y'all this: when it comes to Sailor Moon, I have never seen Moon Prism power not work. I've probably seen over sixty episodes of Sailor Moon. And it has never not worked. By far, one of the most strongest powers in all of anime history is Moon Prism Power. The one just lead the with tiara. <laughs> just, just show up. <laughs> throw your tiara, Sabrina. What is wrong with you? Save us. The other, the other, the the, the other. Or Sabrina, like, whatever her name is. We don't even have to get changed. Just do the Prism Power, yeah, and we all go it. home. <laughs> Yo, it Moon Prism. What, okay. The thing, the thing that gets me about that too is, as I remember it, I can't recall there ever being a punch being thrown. Like you know how like all the other shows, there's a fight not by that her. happens, and then not by her. And, the, and other then you do your <laughs> the other Sailor Scouts, the other Scouts were about that action, <laughs> but Sailor Moon, she run no, no. and then she end the fight. That's it. And Shannon, that's that's why I wasn't I wasn't into it because I'm like they're not even fighting. I was like, where's the fighting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just stuff happens. You're running around, this and that, and then it's just, boom. It's uh, just dudes finish. This dude's throwing Moon a rose. Presence. And this cat keeps yelling at this girl. <laughs> yeah, yo, Sailor Moon was the worst. Love that show. <laughs> so Sailor Moon, um, 430 reboot. I think in some of our past, I think maybe our Saturday morning cartoons, we talked about our love for reboot. Reboot was like a bigger introduction through Toonami to a to a ge, to our generation. Loves reboot. Y'all know what five o'clock was. So that's what I was doing at five o'clock. And then last but not least, 530, Real Adventures of Johnny Quest. So like when Toonami started, uh, there wasn't Dragon Ball Z. So my show was Real Adventures of Johnny Quest. That's what really got me into Toonami. And so I'm a huge, huge Real Adventures of Johnny Quest fan. To this day, one of the best opening theme songs of all time. I was just about to say that, Nels. That show had an amazing intro. That intro was so dope. Quest World when they were all in 3D, fire, fire. No, I, so don't know, I don't know about that. I don't know. Bro, come on, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I know. Like I like you got time, Mark. No, for his but, time. I'm not talking dog, about had, now. It did not age well, Mark. It did not age no, well. But no, back then, out. I liked it. I enjoyed. Hear it. Hear me out. Get a screen grab of reboot and put it next to a Quest World shot, and it's not. <laughs> dog, you can't compare them. Dog, Quest World was looking like. Um, Quest like World was bad War, compared man. to Reboot. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yes, it was yes. bad, dog. It was it looking actually like looked just like Lawnmower Man. <laughs> it looked just like Lawnmower Man. And no, none, none was being re- Reboot at that time. Like, you're talking about, come on now. You can watch Reboot right now, and it still looks great. Like, it was extremely ahead of its time. It looked better than Beast Wars. And Beast Wars was, like, at the time, the best thing I've ever seen. In 3D animation. So yeah, Quest Quest World wasn't so, that great, 
but it was great for when I was watching it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna that. look. I'm not gonna knock you at the time. Like, whoa, 3D animation! Wow, you know, like, <laughs> like we all were like that. We didn't know what we, you know, what was capable. But like looking back on it, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> it's, it, it didn't age well. But I, I give you props. It did not age well at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> so. So I just want to say you you mentioned that like like reboot. This is just something that comes to mind. So I saw someone said, okay. So to me, I'm gonna say reboot as I put this analogy together. It reminds me of Missy Elliott because someone said like Missy Elliott songs that she made 20 years ago seem like they were from the future, and if you play them today, they still seem like they're from the future. And I'm like, that's how I feel like reboot does. Like definitely when reboot when reboot first came out the graphics, the 3D, it seemed like, oh man, like that's, you know, futuristic, this and that. And even if you play, if you play the episode today, like it still holds up pretty well. And you're like, that's still some, something that's sort of forward thinking or or like, you know, something down the road. So I, I just want to say that I feel like that's an analogy where I'm like, reboot is the Missy Elliott. Like it's, it still looks like it's somewhat futuristic years later. Especially the later yep. seasons. I don't. I don't know if you guys remember. It was like they 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 kind of stopped, and then Tsunami brought it back again. I think for like season four, and that season really still looks Fine. great to this day. It's very smooth Fine. animation. But I think with Save about Reboot, when Enzo came back as the Matrix. Yeah, uh, and he Matrix. was grown. Yes. Yeah. 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 Fire. Um, but what what was Save Reboot was it was clever. No, you go back and watch Reboot. There's a lot of like gamer jokes there's a lot of like online humor and that stuff was really new um and it was just good writing we all love bob we all i wanted a glitch so bad dog i wanted a glitch what whatever grappling hook you know so we all, um, we all did mark we all did. and we all wanted our little reboot button boop, boop, yes you know? the little, the little re- <laughs> why am i tapping it like y'all can hear me pop call like y'all can see what i'm doing i no, definitely sure did just chest. double tap my chest <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> anyways <laughs> so that was that was my favorite lineup what about y'all what were some of y'all's favorite shows and if you remember your lineup your lineups that you like so shows man we could be here all night i'll just say um yu yu Hakushu, uh g gundam gundam always ms team which may be one of my favorite gundam series you know, I think it's better than Wing, but you know, we're not we're not going to talk about that. Uh, Outlaw Star, Big O, you know, the list goes on and on. One of my, I, it's I have three favorite lineups, and I and I could not pick one, but I'm gonna run through them real quick. My favorite lineups at the time, it was G Gundam, DBZ, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Roroni Kenshin. Then another one that I thought was fire was it was Zoids. Two episodes of DBZ, you got the double whammy, and then Batman Beyond. And then one of my other favorites was it was Justice League. This is when they brought Justice League on Tsunami. So you get Justice League, DBZ, Yu Hakushu, Roni Kenshin. Like, <laughs> and then do, you, do y'all remember for a while they were doing, I think they did it for like a week, they did two episodes of uh, Dragon Ball and then like two episodes of DBZ? Yes. Yes. So it was like last week's Dragon Ball, then a new Dragon Ball, and last week's DBZ and a new DBZ. Dog, the shows, what do you, it's Toonami, man. What are you going to say? Like Outlaw Star, that that was really that was special one of my for me. Anime is of all time. The Outlaw Star was really special for me because that was a, I was really in, I was a huge Cowboy Bebop fan. So I was really eager to see more like, space westerns what you know and that was outlaw star um big o was like eight different shows mixed into one show dog it was like mark, mark we gotta talk about the big o promo we got we gotta talk about the big o promo look i know you were talking about it i'm sorry i gotta jump in look the, mark mark said it was about eight shows watch the big o promo if you haven't seen the big o promo in the aftermath a new society is formed. I perform a much needed job here in the city of amnesia. In Paradigm City, the rich close themselves into giant domes. 
while the poor must live without protection. But one man stands for something more, and he does it in serious style. As a professional, I just try to do my best. His name is Roger Smith, the negotiator. Try this. It goes against my principles, but I don't have a choice. His allies, an android, a butler, is up to me. and big O. It starts off as a James Bond movie. It then goes and turns into Batman. It then also randomly turns into SWAT cats. I and then know, lastly, you know. it turns into Godzilla. What the hell is going on? I, you know, I love it because I think it even starts. With, I think there's even like a saxophone in the background. It's like it, it, it is like Roger Swing's like Paradise City 40 years ago. And then like Peter Cullen just goes like 40 years ago, this city, and then like, it's just like, what? What is going on here? Dog, Big O was like a James Bond movie mixed with Batman, threw in a, 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 a Power Rangers, and like, it was it was the most bonkers thing I've ever seen in my life, but like, it and was it amazing. Worked. And it, it worked. worked. <laughs> it felt really adult and it at worked. the time. Oh my god! I was like, this is a show for adults. You know, (laughs) why was this good? Oh my goodness! Oh man, let's big O. Big O was the first show in Tsunami that was like, this seems like this is an adult drama. I was like, this doesn't feel like anime. This feels like an adult noir drama. And then at at the at the last five minutes, they throw robots in. Um. I, I, you know what's funny? I didn't even like Big O the show that much, but I loved Big O. I think Big O was low key one of my favorite mechs of all time. It just looks no, like it no, looks Mark, like it should a, be. that was all of us, Mark. We weren't really. <laughs> we were there for Big O. <laughs> we kind of didn't really get because that was it was it wasn't for us. Like it was for it was for adults. We yeah. kind of didn't really get the storyline, but Big O came through. And Big O was whooping ass. <laughs> here's, here's, the, here's the thing that blows my mind because I was really into Batman the Animated Series, which was like a detective noir. That show like would have a very slow burn. It was very adult, but like it was riveting. You were into it. And Big O tried to do the same thing. So I'd just be like, hand, you know, hand on my chin, waiting, look at the clock. And then he, Big O, showtime. <laughs> and then you knew it was on. And, and Mark, <laughs> I will throw this out there. You would have felt the same way about that with Batman, the animated series. If it ended with a giant ass Megazord Batman, you would just be like, huh, this seems OK. But I'm really <laughs> waiting for the giant Megazord Batman to stomp other small random robots for the like the next five minutes. That would be your jam. Look, we, we're going to talk about a lot of shows, but now you, you brought up promos real quick and I'm going to plant my flag. The best tsunami promo, one of the best, I'm gonna say it's top, at least top three, is the Batman Beyond tsunami promo. In the year 2039, Gotham City has no heroes. Its people, no hope. Its youth, no future. Terry McGinnis was part of the problem. You can't control your temper, and you're better if you expect to get anywhere in life. Yeah, I'll be a big success, just like you. Until a moment of violence brought him to the door of a man named Bruce Wayne. Let's put a smile on his face. Leave him alone. Once known as the Batman. Doc, I still, I like, I remember, I remember this to this day. I still, like, a possible mind, he's like, in the year 2039, Gotham City has no heroes. It's people, no hope. It's youth, no future. Oh, and, then, <laughs> and then it just goes the into jokers the... jokers are laughing. The, jo- <laughs> the jokers. Terry McGinnis was part of the problem until a, a moment of violence brought him to the door of a man named Bruce Wayne. Like, so dope. So I, I still to this day watch that promo. It is probably one of the best things for Tanami's ever produced. I am so impressed that you remember it. And I'm also impressed with exactly. myself that actually remembers visually what was happening <laughs> as you were saying it. Like, I remember Terry was you getting remember all slapped it. up. It's Bruce so- Wayne came with the cane, with the cane. <laughs> beat up those old folks. He started choking up. Terry carried him. Next thing <laughs> you know, he became Batman. Like, I remember the whole thing. And then, yes, man. The, the, the end. 
right? When he's like, he's like, justice returns to Gotham. And the dude's like, you're pretty strong for some clown who thinks he's Batman. And Terry's like, I am Batman. No, only Toonami. One of the only greatest Tsunami. things they've ever made. It's so dope. <laughs> Man. Yeah. This just got me sit, got sitting in nostalgia. Like, I'm <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely going to watch that after this episode. <laughs> I'm going to watch that promo now. <laughs> So this, I feel like this sort of saddens me. Like I should have been more open minded because I feel like mine, my shows. Well, the, these were like the shows that I generally watch: reboot, Dragon Ball Z, no surprise, Dragon Ball, Ronin Warriors, Batman Beyond, and that's pretty much about it. And so, so like a lot of the other like anime and just other shows from Big O to. Even I mean, even later uh, with Attack on Titan, all of, all of those types of things, I never really watched them or or got into them, and 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 it wasn't because they weren't good. I think I was just like, Dragon Ball Z is the greatest thing ever, and there's no need to try anything else. <laughs> so so uh, so I really you know didn't get into uh, many many of the other ones, and mostly because it was just once again I was like Dragon Ball Z. I'm loyal. That's all I need to see. I'm happy, and then you know. So that was pretty much the ones I watched. And I feel like my favorite lineup was, I believe it was one where I don't know what happened before five, because I think I was generally like coming home from practice or, or whatnot. But I think Dragon Ball was at five. Dragon Ball Z was at 530. Batman Beyond was at six. And then Transformers Armada. I remember they were on at 630, but I don't even I don't even know if I really like got to see them that much. But definitely that from basically five to six or or i guess five to six thirty i'm watching uh those three shows at least yeah, you ain't have no appetizer there shannon you just jumped into the main course you're like right, i'm coming through i don't need nothing to cleanse my palate i'm just jumping into dbz that's what's up shannon what's going up? to jumping in the house like he got out of his car like fred flintstone like <laughs> sliding off the dinosaur tail jumping into his house so there there is one show well, there's two shows that we need to talk about. One is Tenshi Muyo. I don't know if y'all watch Tenshi Muyo, but I sure enough watched Tenshi Muyo. Tenshi Muyo was out there. Pretty much this brother had a laser sword and six young women who were all trying to like get with Tenshi. As a super horny 14, 16, however old I was, the thought of being like a mystic warrior and also having six women flaunt you like that. I was like, Tenchi is my hero. Tenchi is my hero. I am so down for this man's like story. And like, it only lasted for like a year and some change, but like I was, I was down for Tenchi. Tenchi was a show like I wasn't really into, but I liked watching it. I, it was just like, it was so out there. It was like this, this kid, who lived in the country with like his grandpa and then all of a sudden like space sexy space pirates start showing up to his house and then they're in love with him and then there's like a space cat rabbit that turns into a spaceship and, and he has a laser sword and it, it, it was just like it was out there i i had mad respect for it because i was like this is anime when i saw it, like this is this is anime this, this is, is anime <laughs> I was like, this is anime. I think I know anime because I like DBZ, but this is, the, I was like, this is what's going on in Japan. When I saw T- Tenchi, I'm like, this is what the kids are like watching in Japan. This is um, what's hot in the streets right now. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a word for that type of anime that Tenchi is. I think it's called har- harem. The the whole like one boy and a bunch of girls like are in love with him. There's like a genre. Like, genre. I I, I'm not even so I shouldn't even be surprised anymore that that is a <laughs> genre of stuff going on in Asia. Like I shouldn't. That's what that's what's up, Mark. That's, that's what what's up. Is. I'm not there's, even there's a word for it. <laughs> of course there is. Of course there is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, Anyways. Yeah. So that's one show. The other show is Gundam Wing. And we have to talk about Gundam right, Wing. Here we go. Here we go. So. So here's the thing about Gundam. And this is another key pivotal thing. In our friendship with Mark. So me and Mark and I's very close mutual friend. We love Gundam Wing. Gundam, and now mind you, Gundam Wing is 
probably the worst of all the Gundam shows. <laughs> nah, nah, it's up there. It's up there, man. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, Mark. I'll say we'll we'll take your word. You are clearly the giant uh giant machine expert when it comes to this. Gundam Wing is preteens who are like full of emotional drama operating the most extreme Gundam machines that you have ever seen on like this was like our first time like our th- what we saw before this was Voltron and the Power Rangers we didn't know that there could be like one person with all their emotional trauma operating a nuclear weapon type style of machine and so like <laughs> this dude will like break a girl's heart at 5 p.m. And then at 6 p.m., he's setting up his Gundam for self-destruct because <laughs> he's really upset that he's not going to win the battle. Like, yeah. Gundam Wing was out there. He'd go to a yeah. dance, and then that afternoon, you have to go, like, blow up Australia or something. Yes. Like, <laughs> mission accepted. And then he'd be in bed by 9 o'clock going to high school the next day. <laughs> Gundam Wing was out there, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. That was my introduction to Gundam. So like the entire like concept of Gundam and look, in case y'all are wondering, Asia loves Gundams. Like there yeah, probably it's... is a actual operating Gundam somewhere in the mountains of one of these Asian countries. Like I promise you there is because that fascination needs to be rooted in some type of factual, actual thing. So yeah, but Gundam Wing loved it. Mark hated the fact that we love Gundam Wing and didn't try any other Gundam show <laughs> that came yo, out. It made me so because I'm like, yo, there's so to this day, there's so many dope Shannon. I be trying to put these dudes on so many dope Gundam shows. I I was like, yo, there's a new Gundam show called Iron Blood Orphans. If you love Wing, you're probably gonna love no. It, it was Gundam Double O, but I was like, yo, Iron Blood Orphans. They're children soldiers who get a Gundam. And decide they don't want to be children soldiers anymore and, and run their own stuff. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Gundam Wing is good, right, good enough for us. We're okay. We're okay. We don't need you at the Gundams. But... <laughs> but for nah, years. We, for hey, years, hey, Shannon. <laughs> we're just like, no, nah, we're good. We got Gundam Wing. We're good. It's like you, give, you, you've been with one person your entire life. You know, maybe, maybe you know, uh, but before you commit, like, play the field. It's like, no, no. <laughs> they treat me well. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Like, look, I don't, I don't have any hate about Gundam Wing. It, it's iconic. It, it was also, it had the Dragon Ball Z effect. It introduced people into a lot of, um, it introduced people to anime, and then a lot of people went to like other mecha anime from Gundam Wing. My issue with Gundam Wing was like, <laughs> it, it'd be, it'd be cool for thirty seconds, and then it'd be a lot of politics. People talking about. I don't know the libertarian whatever whatever and 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 that's kind of what Gundam is as a as a thing it's it, it it Gundam is like war is hell and this is all the things that make war hell and the people who who get caught in the crossfire I was just like yo these kids are so quick to blow up their Gundams they're blessed with these the, the most high I feel like it happened technology. every episode yeah I feel like was, I swear to goodness it happened every episode Someone saw me my Gundam. Time to explode it. Like, come on, dog. This you've been entrusted with the most advanced technology in the galaxy, <laughs> and you're just gonna blow it up. Toonami handled Gundam very well. The Gundam Wing promo. I don't know if you remember Nels and Shannon. It was like two minutes long. Those who oppose them, we won't be needing you any further. What? Die. <laughs> Battles are waged with mobile suits, the key to military dominance. The only hope for the colonies, five elite soldiers and their legendary mobile suits called Gundams. There will be a day when the Gundams will save us all. What this is, is war. All of you are very mistaken, and the Gundams will soon come to rectify your mistakes. Silence! Now, it was, it was pretty much like a movie trailer. It was like two minutes long. And then do you remember they did those, they did a uh, profile, like character profiles. They would, they'd be like dual Maxwell, uh, uh, pilot of the death site. And, and they'd have like, they say like what they're not stats, but like what they were known for. So that like, they handled Gundam Wing really cool. Um, I just think personally, there's a lot of better 
Gundam series out there, a lot of more fun Gundam series. Even G Gundam, for all its silliness, was a lot of fun to watch. Um, if, you, if you're curious, OFMS team, check it out. It is one of the best Gundam things that ever exist. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm good over here. <laughs> I'm good over here. I got what I need. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Promos. So, look, we, you can't escape it. Before we even got to this question, we've talked about maybe even 10 promos already. Toonami, a key thing is Peter Cullen. And the key thing is these promos and these openings for these shows. I, like, watch some type of review on Toonami. And they said part of the reason Toonami is so great is because it's how they curate the art, the curate the media that they have. It's like they put so much time and energy and investment in showing you the beauty that is the show that you're watching. I got to say, there is one. And Mark, you may this may be what you were thinking. There is this uh, random segment of like, like a promotion for Toonami that to this day... It's hilarious why we loved it so much. It's called Advanced Robotics. Robots, thousands, programmed for destruction. March towards the future is coming. Man's greatest inventions, making the impossible possible, are no longer under our control. Technological strength will just become a threat to the Earth. Old emotionalists. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like he's he Peter Cullen is pretty much like robots built by man serve no one. They're going to kill us all. Yeah. We are all going to die. There are emotionless armies, machines that are here for their own preservation and for the destruction of humans. And we're all like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it was this he was so warning great. us about the Matrix. He was like, he was like, the Matrix is here. It's happening. <laughs> and all you see yeah. in these shows is giant machine, the, the giant machine from World's Strongest, just like beating the crap out of Krillin. And you're seeing a whole bunch of Gundams randomly shooting up people. Like you're seeing all these machines causing destruction in all of our shows. And Peter Cullen's like, and this could happen. This is currently happening to us now. And we're like, yeah, I can't wait to watch more. <laughs> like, yeah, that that's, <laughs> it was like the genius of Tsunami. And like Peter Cullen is frightening us. And we are just giddy with joy. Like, oh, this is so awesome. So, yeah. What, what other promos <laughs> and openings do you all enjoy from Tsunami? I mean, Man, I I told you the Batman one, you know, that's one of my favorites. But um, all the DBZ promos or intros were fire. They they never had a bad one. One of my favorite DBZ promos was the Majin Buu saga promo, and it opened with like a like a radio. It was it was it was uh, audio from the show and opened from a radio saying like only one fifth of the world population remains. And Peter Cohn's like, Majin Buu's powers, unbelievable. The devastation seems to be non-ending. Without a rough count, only one fifth of the world's population remains. Majin Buu's power is unbelievable. Not even Goku has what it takes to deal with that. All of our major cities are gone. The governments are mostly destroyed. Babidi's domination of Earth seems inevitable. Buu, unstoppable. There is hope, but if Buu finds it, he'll destroy it. It's these two. Even Goku is going to need some help with this one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is horrible. However, we have heard unsubstantiated rumors that there may be someone left. Someone left in this world willing to fight. Goku, you know, unstoppable. And, and Pickle's like, there's there's still hope. It's these two. And he picks up, like, Gohan and Goten. And uh, he's like, even Goku's going to need some help on this one. And then Goku's like, Gohan and Vegeta are dead. And both like, no! <laughs> like, no, it was just like, I was like, what is going on, Tsunami? What is this? Like, Gohan and Vegeta are dead. Like, no, it, and, and then it, it ends with um Peter Cullen's like, uh, it's darkness, it's darkness just before dawn. And uh you see Go Tanks for the first time. He's like, Boo is nothing. I'll bring him back dead. I was like, I was like, 
yo, we are doing it. We are doing it on tsunami. Like <laughs> that was a great one, yo. That oh, was, it was they, so they good. never missed. And all the Dragon Ball Z <laughs> promos never missed, but that was a that was definitely never, great. never missed. Um even the kid boo ones. Yeah, kid boo yeah. ones were dope. Yeah. Um, I, I I really do you remember um no no Shannon, do you guys remember the, the DBZ character profiles they did? Those were fire. They, they, they did like five. They did like a Goku, Vegeta, Krillin, and a Piccolo one, and a Gohan one. And the Gohan dog, the, one was great. The Krillin one was very good. But the that Krillin, Gohan one was dope. The Krillin, dog, they were all, you made Krillin look like he's like the right hand of justice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Peter Cullen. It's yeah. Peter Cullen, Mark. Yeah. If Peter Cullen talks about any of us, we could probably run for president. Like Peter Cullen. Mm-hmm. Makes you sound good. Peter Cullen could read the back of a cereal box and it would sound great. You could call Peter Cullen right now. Like, hey, Peter, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm making a cup of noodles. <laughs> <laughs> they just, man, he was like, I remember the Piccolo one. He's like, a man divided, a link between two worlds. The the Outlaw Star promo was was great. Fantastic. It was amazing. The, yeah, that was that's probably one of their best, too. Welcome to the future. Transferring to autopilot mode. A place where good guys finish last. Oh. I'll make them wish they'd never been born. A quick draw yes. is the best effect. Nothing personal, but I'm here to kill you. And your wits are all you can count on. Yeah. A future where one treasure is coveted above all else. Tell me the coordinates yeah. of the galactic ley line. I loved all the Yu Yu Hakusho intros and promos. Like, I mean, this was part of the reason why everyone loved Tsunami to see like what they were going to do next. How what? And and they were such a fan. They did stuff just because they thought it was cool and fans would like it. You know what I mean? Like they're like, yo, let's make a music video. A th- let's make a two minute segment about dreams, and the focus is going to be. Gene Star went in Gohan, and we're going to put a dope beat behind it and let Jet from Cowboy Bebop talk over it. Let, let's make a, let's a make a, pro- too. Let's make a, a promo one. about teaching, and it's going to be uh, about Gohan and Goku learning before the Saiyans come. You know, it is like they would do all these little these little segments and, and, and moments, and it was, it was amazing. It was so good. The music of Toonami is a big part of all this. The beats were like, they were fire. They were, did y'all yeah, have the, the CD? Yeah, I was about to say, in the last, when we, in our DBZ episode, you mentioned like trip hop and deep space bass. Like, right? CD, Isn't that what that space, CD's yeah. called? Yeah. Yeah, it was called Deep Space Bass. And then they had like some, um, another one that came out there's like five of them now, but there was another one that came out. It was called like the Black Hole Mega Mix. Fire. Like, I think the links to those are still up. They're free. Well, Deep Space Base, I had to hunt down on the internet, but the, the Black Hole Mega Mix, I think you can find the link. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was just trying to think. I know, I feel like there's, and I know the internet's screaming at us. I feel like there's like one or two like dope kind of like promos or intro. Well, oh, bro, Pardon Our Dust. Part- that joint it didn't even have <laughs> words it, in it. It was it like two minutes of explosions. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't Part- even yeah. words. Yeah, it was just like just explode. It was two minutes of explosions. And 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 I don't know what do you guys think, but I'm I'm gonna say the best tsunami intro of all time is the DBZ Android and yes, Cell Mark. Saga. Yes, intro. That is the yes. best tsunami intro. And of the all Prince time. of All Saiyans once again. <laughs> yes. the best it's the best this is not a question it is the greatest it is yes it is the best period oh, i don't care look I'll, come at me 
internet, if you telling me there is a better intro than that one, you're lying. You're lying. That best. is the best intro ever. It it's so good that like. When Cell showed up, they didn't even change it. They're like, just keep using the, <laughs> the Android one. It was, you got Metal Frieza showing up, Trunks blocking the, thing, blocking the thing. <laughs> Krillin yelling, get down! Get down! <laughs> He's here! Get down! <laughs> I will make this whole planet suffer! Planet, yes! <laughs> <laughs> no! And then Gohan, this can't be happening. Happening, <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness, man! Y'all don't know, man. Oh, so that good, was the best. so that was good. The best. Goodness gracious, <laughs> people to imagine like we went from like seeing Goku beat Frieza to getting this promo and this intro, and it's like, what? Frieza's back. Who's this guy with this purple jacket? Why is Vegeta punching women in the face? Like, <laughs> like what is going on right now? And it, 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 it was. Yeah, I was and they legit said that Frieza was stronger. Like there was a promo that was all about f- making Frieza the robot and getting him stronger and bigger. And next thing you know, there is a super saiyan. We have only seen one of those. There is a super <laughs> saiyan with a sword. Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> oh making my short work, making short work, making short work of him. Making short work of Frieza. What the hell is happening? Yeah, man. Good stuff. And, and then at the end, they're like, oh, by the way, Vegeta's a Super Saiyan. See you at five yes. o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> okay. All right. For an 11 year run that was pivotal in our middle school and high school years, spending a lot of time where we could have been doing homework and should have been doing homework for some of us, uh, like this clearly had an impact in our lives. So, what would you say are some of the takeaways? From your years of watching Toonami. And of course, Toonami came back, you know, in, in 2012 and, you know, was a part of Adult Swim. And so, like, Toonami is still here and around. But we're really talking about the Toonami that molded us in their first 11-year run. What were some of the takeaways, some of the impact that Toonami had on your life that you can remember from, like, what what you were watching back then to, like, how you're living now? It, it was like being in a club that everyone knew about, but only a, it, it, everyone knew about it, but it felt like only a few people knew about it, you know? And Toonami was the first time I watched TV and I was like, yo, the people, the people in the office making decisions are fans like me. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not a bunch of like, like suits or executives it's people who love this stuff like me are making all the decisions and want to make something just because they are fans. It like, I, it was a big part of my life. Like it, I still watch these promos to this day, huge part of my life. Me and my brother talk about tsunami all the time. It's a huge part of our life. Wake up. Cause you know, we weren't supposed to be up. We'd wake up. He'd play lookout or I play lookout, turn on midnight run. You know, watch Midnight Run. All right, all right, go, go, all right, go back to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just it's such a big part. And it introduced us to anime. And it, it felt like, it's like, look, y'all like Dragon Ball Z? Check this out. It's not Dragon Ball Z, but we think. It, it, was, it was like going over to that friend's house. Oh, you like that tape? Yo, check this out. It's not the same, but I think you're going to like this. And it, it just, it, it, it felt unifying. It felt, it was fun. It it means, like, when I think about it in my childhood, like, there's, like, my childhood before Toonami and then my childhood, like, kind of during Toonami. And it it brings back so much nostalgia. It's it's, when I hear these beats, when I hear Steve Steve as Tom, when I hear Peter, Peter Colin's voice, it's just, like, it sparks these joyful memories. And I know it sounds like really cheesy, but it that's the only way I know how to explain it. It's like these, these joyful memories I had of watching Toonami, watching DBZ, then running outside and telling, like talking to friends about what you saw or, you know, at school the next day and just, you know, looking for this music that I, that I, these beats that I loved on the internet, tracking down this CD, you know, it, it was a time where you had to work, for your media, especially anime, 
you know, it, this was like people don't understand. Like, it's we could go on Hulu right now and the whole season of Yu Yu Hakusho and, and My Hero Academia and Demon Slayer on Hulu. But this was a time where we had to work for anime. You had to go to comic book shops. You had to go get Japanese sub tapes. You know what I'm saying? And like, it felt like Toonami was helping us with that legwork. You know, and they were like, like, oh, 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 we just got this from Japan. Y'all gonna, this is fire. Check this out. No one knows about this yet. So, um, I, I, I haven't really checked in Toonami too much lately. Um, you know, there, I think it only comes on on Saturday now, and the lineup. I, a lot of the shows, unfortunately, that are on Toonami now, I can see elsewhere in other places. And I'm, I'm busy. I'm a parent, but uh, yeah, man, it was a great thing. I don't, you know, I don't know how we would share it with our kids. You know, maybe with Toonami still be a thing, but like, I'm very thankful to Toonami and William Street for like what they did. And um, they're a big part of my childhood. I think for me, it, the way it shaped it, it, it did this thing of showing like, no matter who we are, there's this similarity or there, there are these things that we have in common, things we care about you know stuff like that because i because i look at it as you know i mentioned earlier like you know coolest person i know you know whatever is like he's making a reference to drag to dragon ball z to go on super saiyan like in a game or something like that and then even so many of the the shows the promos all of these things i feel like there's just these bits of culture that you can find in all of them so obviously i mean it's anime so therefore we've got you know a huge like swab of of uh Asian culture there. So it's anime period. And then with a lot of the music, uh, the way things were sort of thrown in, like culture wise, I'm like, I mean, there's like some hip hop culture in there as well. Like even just with the music and things like that, it does this thing of saying we're pulling different pieces of culture, whether it's literally like racial demographic or whether it's this, I don't know, this subculture where we're saying like, I don't know, rock and roll, hip hop, this type of thing, whatever it is. And it just did it in this beautiful way where where I don't think there's anyone who watched it and would be like, oh, man, I hate this music. Like, you know, I hate I hate when they play this type of music. I, I think people would be like, even if the music wasn't something that would generally catch you, you're like, I can rock with this. And it goes well with what I'm seeing, the fight, the the, the promo, whatever it is. So, yeah. So for me, I I love that about it. And looking at it, it has me sort of being like, OK, yeah, when like I like meeting people, talking to people and things like that, because I'm always like, oh, there's there's something that we probably have in common that, that we would like. And, and it's just, you know, just random things. Uh, you know, it could be something random. But for me, I, I feel like that's like a piece of what Toonami did. Uh, the other thing, it, of course, solidified my love for Dragon Ball Z. That is what I've been talking about, like the whole time. But uh, to have to have seen it there, to have you know, Dragon Ball Z came on, say, five times this week. For some reason, I missed the episode Wednesday. I I, I got to figure out some way to catch up. Like, it's not just a, you know, because, because you know, and, and you have those hard life decisions because you're like, okay, I missed it. So now do I want to go forward not knowing what happened on Wednesday because that's going to be a gap or something? Or do I want to hold off progressing until I can figure out a way to catch this episode and then also catch up like you it really had you making hard life decisions and prioritizing which is as an adult that's something that you have to constantly do uh, you know even though it's not necessarily with cartoons but i uh, i just i just love that that it, as we reflect it also had us doing that at young middle school high school age students i have to make some hard choices here and none of them are the wrong choice but they're just their choices that each have their own consequences or or advantages as well. I mean, just a few things. Y'all y'all definitely named it like one. It's a hell of a babysitter. Like, look, we came home and that's who was in charge, Toonami. And like, I couldn't ask for a better babysitter. Like, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I stayed put. I didn't go out. I didn't do anything I was supposed to because I wanted to see what was going on. And two... I don't know if I would have saw the end of Dragon Ball Z if it wasn't for Toonami. And I don't know if I would have saw the end of Reboot if it wasn't for Toonami. And those were like two pivotal shows in my life. And I got to see it because of them. And then three, Toonami was like the pseudo headquarters 
for nerd culture. Like it was it or it maybe a better way to say it is, I think that was a start of like nerd culture being more broadly accepted to our generation. And like that was like the headquarters for it. Because like if you could get folks to agree that they're all watching Dragon Ball Z and like the little kid in the corner who's reading Dragon Ball Z manga or drawing Dragon Ball Z characters is less weird because of Toonami than like fast forward to now where we are like three of the biggest movies of all time are superhero movies. Like would we have gotten that if there wasn't a 60 million people watching Dragon Ball Z? Like in however many years ago, like I don't know. I don't know. Like I think this could if we could pinpoint anything that made nerd culture more acceptable to the masses, tsunami somewhere in there. I won't I won't give them all the credit, but they damn near get a lot of it. No, so I just wanna like that was that was great what you said. And I think yeah, they do deserve a lot of credit. It it what it didn't feel like you were watching TV when you were watching Tsunami because there was this whole ritual like Tom and the absolution would show up and and the 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 his co-host Sarah the AI you know Tom hurry up and he, you know he pushes little buttons do 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 you know it it just it felt like you were always starting a movie or something it just it just felt like this event and then they would even like when tsunami ended they like would be like all right see you guys later till next time so it it, it didn't feel, it didn't feel like just like the blandness of uh tv episodes and just going through the motions it was like a ritual it was a ritual in its own right you know you came home toonami was on cartoon network but you're not watching cartoon network you're watching toonami you know what i mean so it was just it had this like unifying kind of culture to it you know one thing i just i just thought about it's funny and it, the people even at toonami had a sense of humor um when they when they ran Hamtaro. <laughs> Yo, Hamtaro. we were about to finish the episode without talking about Hamtaro. <laughs> so Hamtaro. If, if, for those who don't know, Hamtaro was this anime about like these hamsters in a neighborhood that would get together and and look for sunflower seeds. It, it it's like the one show that had no business being on Tsunami. And it's so funny because even in the like the promo or intro, Tom's like. Which went hard, it by did. the way. But it, right, right in the beginning, like you remember, like him, Charles, like singing, and Tom's like, "Uh, what? Uh, oh. <laughs> he's like, like, what? What is this doing on?" Tonight? <laughs> and he's like, "Okay, the pro- <laughs> I will look. I promise y'all. Like maybe we were just drinking the Kool Aid too much, but like the promo of the lead up for when Hamtaro would premiere, you would think this show was gonna be dope." Yeah. Like I was just like, yo, I don't know what they're selling me right now, but like that I'm going to watch was, some Hamtaro. That was the Toonami MCU moment where they were like, yo, we're so big, we could put anything on Toonami and it's going to be a hit. <laughs> yep, facts. Facts. <laughs> Hamtaro. <laughs> oh my goodness. All I right. Just talking about promos all day, man. <laughs> we really could. We really could. That is our episode on Toonami. Thank you all for listening. We have a new episode every month. You can find us on all social media at PopCultParent, P-O-P-C-U-L-T-P-A-R-E-N-T. You can visit us at www.popcultparent.com. Email us at popcultparent at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate us, review, and subscribe. And as always... Join the cult. Peace. The day is great, will not fall again. Only to the